So welcome and thank you for attending Candidates for Town Council Candidates Forum. We appreciate the candidates for agreeing to participate. We do have all six of them here this evening. And uh, we're looking forward to um, covering these questions um, that have been submitted by the public. We appreciate Justin Ryder and the Historic Masonic Theater, Theater for allowing us to use the auditorium this evening. We'd also like to thank the Clifton Forge Women's Club for agreeing to assist uh, and they are greeting outside. If you think of a question during the evening that you would like to ask, please just go out and see one of the ladies there and they will give you a um, card that you can write your question on. I'd also like to thank Susan Nick um, from the Chamber Office for working on the logistics around this event. And again, um, I will be serving as the timer this evening. I'll be seated just down front here. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. John Renoni. He's going to be our moderator for the evening. Thank you, John. Well, thank you, Teresa. Uh, good evening, and thank you to everybody, and especially to our candidates. Um, in alphabetical order, the following individuals are candidates for the seats on the Clifton Forge Town Council. Uh, Jeremy Bastion, Dale Burdett, Courtney Howard, Deborah Laudermilk, Benjamin Nicely, and Robert Umstead. The following rules have been established to govern tonight's forum. Each candidate will have one minute to briefly introduce themselves. We will then move to, into the question and answer portion of the forum. All questions, as Teresa said, must be submitted to the review panel. No questions may be asked from the floor. If, again, if you wish to submit a question, there is a table in the foyer. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer each question. We will rotate the order in which the candidates respond. The timer, which will be Teresa, will raise her hand when you have 30 seconds remaining and will stand up when the time is up. At the conclusion of the question and answer portion of the forum, each candidate will have three minutes to present statements about their candidacy and explain why they're running for office. So we will begin with our one minute introduction with Mr. Sebastian. Hi, thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, <coughs> my name is Jeremy Bastian. Um, I work for UVA. As a cyber security analyst, um, I think I deserve your vote because I really love Clifton Forge and I invested a lot of my time and money here. Um, everything that I do is going to affect me. Every policy that I vote on is going to affect me also as well as you. So when you do better, I'll do better. Thank you. My name is Dale Burdett. I'm a lifelong resident of Clifton Forge. I'm currently serving on town council right now. I have 15 years of experience in local government and public service, and I just wish to continue to serve the public here in Clifton Forge. Hello, my name is Courtney Fridley Howard. I'm a, I was born and raised in Allegheny County, but I'm a resident of Clifton Forge now. My husband and I moved in and in 2017, we have two beautiful children now. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in theater and psychology from Emory and Henry College. And I currently serve as the chair of the Clifton Forge Parks and Trails Committee, We're working on All Abilities Park and the Sensory Trail Projects. I've also been running social media for Allegheny Core, and I've been working as an election worker previous to the COVID pandemic. I have not been back because I had two children. <laughs> My name is Debbie Laudermilk. <clears throat> I am currently serving on town council. I became a permanent resident of Clifton Forge in April of 2017 when I retired from Virginia State Parks. I have uh, numerous years of public service in other areas, whether it be town, county, state, and federal government. Um, I have made this my home. I love it here. I married my husband who is born and raised in the area and I also uh, work here. So my heart is in Clifton Forge. I always dreamed to retire here and I just want to do what I can to make it the best for all of us. My name is uh, Ben Nicely. I live on English Street and uh, I've lived here my whole life. Um, 
family, friends, relatives, everybody. I uh, know a lot of people here. A lot of people know who I am and it makes me want to represent them. So um, I work for a small business here in the community and um, just want to make this community better for small businesses and the people in the area. Um, my name, <clears throat> sorry, my name is Bob Umstead. I moved here in 83. We've been here almost 40 years. I taught in the public schools here for 40 years. I have a bachelor's degree, two master's degrees, and a PhD from Virginia Tech. I think I'm very well qualified to fill this position. I have a lot of interest. My main interest is the community and the kids. That means the public schools, the medical facilities we have. I think when you run for town council in Clifton Forge, you have to go outside the boundaries of Clifton Forge to support Clifton Forge. That's been my goal forever, is to bring anything we can here to make Clifton Forge better. And I'm finishing up my eighth year on town council at this moment. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. We will go with our first question. We'll start with Mr. Burdett. Um, what do you see as one of the most important issues facing the Allegheny Highlands at this time? Now, we obviously have a a myriad of issues that face any community after a pandemic. Uh, but us in particular, I think that housing is one of the number one problems that we have. Uh, not that we don't have housing, is that we have usable housing. And when people look to relocate or just move back to the area to open a business or just to live and raise a family, uh, they're looking for usable housing. So I think that's a that, in addition to lodging, it's kind of go hand in hand. Um, I think that is something that we need to address as a local community. Uh, I think there are some ways, like we incentivize how to uh, develop and redevelop our downtown businesses. I think we need to continue to put money into our, our housing and neighborhoods. I think that one of our main problems in the area is that we're constantly losing population. Um, we have a lot of young people that once they reach the age of 18, they've been saying for the last five years, I can't wait until I get out of here. And as soon as they're old enough, they run. And I think we have to handle that population issue with bringing in good prospects for jobs, good housing, things for children to do, younger people to do. We don't have a whole lot of activities and interesting businesses for young people. We need to bring in you know, tech startup companies while we've got 100% available fiber internet. We need to bring in lots more businesses for entertainment for young people. And we need to focus on, yes, we do have an aging population, but we have to worry about who is gonna take care of those people. So we have to have younger people who are able to carry the load and to take care of the aging population. So healthcare workers and other service workers are absolutely necessary. Okay, I agree with the housing thing. Um, <clears throat> we have quite a few houses in, particularly in Clifton Forge, but I know throughout the county, that just need a lot of work. Um, I have met and become friends with numerous people who have moved to the area and taking on some of these projects as their own, uh, buying these old dilapidated houses and remodeling them and either putting them up for rental property or putting them up for sale. Uh, this is huge in helping bring housing here. Our internet is better than most large cities' internet. That is a fact, which means that our county, our, our town, offers huge um, opportunities for people who can work from home. So I think that if we can work on getting some of these houses uh, refurbished and filled, getting some of these, these empty storefronts on Main Street filled, um, and, and getting more people to the area, I think that would, would be great. I'm gonna say probably uh, our storefronts um, we need to be attractive to people that are passing through or coming by that want to possibly move here. Um, we need to have an appearance that they can bring a small business here and strive. We need to look at some of the homes that are in very poor condition and just, just make our town appealing 
to outsiders so we can bring them in and have a better population, more stores, more small businesses. It's an interesting question because I think Allegheny County needs us to grow. What we need from Allegheny County is reasons for people to want to move here. At one end of town we have a community college which draws in a lot of people to go to school there. At the other end of town we have a park that draws in a lot of people during the summer and does a lot of good things. What we're sitting in draws in people. We need though when people talk to me about it and I get a lot of people talking to me about it, they're concerned about our medical facilities. Do I have to make a hundred mile round trip to go to Roanoke to see a doctor? If something goes wrong, can I go to this hospital here and get it taken care of? Now, if we are an aging pop population, which we are, and I'm part of it, we need to deal with the people that are here to keep them here. If we deal that, do with that, we're going to draw more people in to help fill in those gaps. I have six kids. Four of them, within three years, four of the four daughters, will be within <coughs> ten miles of us. Two boys, no. I think we have to preserve what we've got and make it better. And to me, it's our medical facilities and educational facilities that are going to draw people. Thank you. I think one of the issues that we have here um, are jobs. I don't think we have I don't think we have the jobs that a man can work and actually support a family. I mean, nobody here is actually going to. Uh, no man's going to tell their daughter to marry a man who only makes $11 an hour or $12 an hour or $15 an hour. Um, a lot of people are saying there are jobs and people don't want to work them. When I was walking around trying to get signatures for this job, but the people are telling me that, okay, I don't want a job that if it's not busy, you tell me to go home after two hours. Or because you're not, because you're not busy. That's only, that's only, you only paid them $11 an hour. That's only $22. So then they, one lady told me she had her kid. She had to get somebody $20 to watch her kid. So we don't, we don't have the jobs that people want. And I think that's the big, that's the big issue around here. So. Great. Okay, we'll go on to the next question and we'll start with Ms. Howard. Um, what services can be shared with the county in order to save money? We currently share, you know, the load with our garbage collection. We have, you know, some public works, things that are picked up by the county as well. <clears throat> um, there's a lot that the county can do, but I think the town of Clifton Forge, if we want to remain a town and not just give up and become part of the county, we have to be able to handle a lot of the services that we do on our own. So we do have, you know, our own snow removal. We do have our own public works. We have a lot that we do ourselves. Um, there's always room to change and always room for improvement, but at this time, I don't have any specific ideas of certain services that I know the county could pick up. Okay, thank you. I would like to see the uh, town and county work closer together, uh, utilizing our parks and our ball fields more. <clears throat> I know that we have uh, a couple of ball fields here in the town of Clifton Forge that hardly are ever used uh, because they're using other ball fields in other areas of the county. Um, I think that that's somewhere that we could, we could absolutely work together and provide better services for both the town and the county. Uh, we do obviously share things like water and sewer, um, but I, I do think parts and ball fields are something that we could really shine on. I would like to try to keep Clifton as independent as I can um, from the county, but um, right at the moment I don't have any issues. Um, since I've been on council, there's a number of things that the county and Clifton Forge have shared. Uh, one time we had a public works person oversaw both. That probably didn't work out as well as we'd like it to. Now we're back to having our own. I think we have our own rescue squad. I hear there's a plan to have rescue squads up and down 64 from 
West Virginia line to the Rockbridge County line so that they can be served better. I think there's a lot of things we do work well together on, but I think there's more things we could work better at if people were willing to work together as a team as well as the people that are on the ground. The people on the ground are willing to work together. I had one lady tell me that if you had fewer governmental bodies, things would probably work better. I've looked into that and I don't understand her question or answer to me, but who knows. I think we might have a lot of chiefs and maybe not quite enough Indians. Um, I think they could share vehicles. I mean, I, I personally tried to get a dump truck and they told me that, you know, it was the town dump truck was being used at that time, but the county had one that I can use. And I think, I think if we only have one dump truck, or two and the county has multiple, I think we should coordinate with the county, okay, if, you know, we may need multiple if one of ours is off the road, can we use some of the county vehicles also? I think, I think that should be shared and those things get expensive to repair and I think if we share that with the county, those costs with the county, I think we can, we can have a lot more vehicles on the road here. <clears throat> I agree. It was already alluded to that we already share refuse with the county, and it seems to work pretty good. Um, I will say, I think uh, I think Debbie's part right with the parks. Um, I will say, in my role with Allegheny County Parks and Recreation, Chuck and his staff work with us very well in youth football and youth basketball, and we do utilize those facilities pretty well. Um, there's some other sports that would like to see more on this end of the county to represent our constituents. So I would say she's definitely part of the right, but I would definitely lean towards the emergency services. And I, I think that's something that's going to be a growing trend with the reduction of volunteers that are covering the county. So, And I think that the Forge has a good track record of working with the county when they can. And like I said, I, I'm speaking from a parks and recreation perspective. But I, I think Chad and his staff would do a great job working with our emergency coordinator in Allegheny County. Okay, our next question will start with um, Deb. Why do you believe you are the strongest candidate for council? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'm currently serving on town council, and I have to tell you I'm thoroughly enjoying what I'm doing here. Um, my background goes back to um, years ago I worked for the town of uh, Farmville, and I worked there in a, in a completely different capacity in parks and recreation. But I went on from there to work for Prince Edward County as a recreation director, and from there I ended up uh, working for the state government, and also I've been in the military, so I've also worked for federal government. I have, um, I have chaired numerous organizations from Heart of Virginia Festivals. Uh, I was the uh, uh, chairman of the Heart of Virginia Festival for two years, which is a huge festival that takes place in Farmville annually, and I did that while I was the recreation director in Prince Edward County. But I have a very um, diverse background in public service, and the, the background that I have comes from different localities that I think I can bring some experience from those different areas of the state of Virginia to our town of Clifton Forge. Well, <clears throat> I guess um, my personality, um, I'm good at bringing two different parties together if there's a miscommunication or something. I'm pretty good at reading people, um, easy to deal with. I, like I said, I've lived here my whole entire life and pretty much know just about everybody in the town. And um, they could come to me with a problem or I could easily go sit with them and talk if there was some issue with something else. But um, I just think I would be a good candidate because I, I've just been here my whole life. I know everybody. I know how this town works. And I uh, just want to look forward to being a part of that. How long do I have? Three, three minutes. Three minutes. Can I borrow other people's? Um, like I said, I've lived here for 40 years. 
I've been on town council now for eight years. We have faced anything that comes to us and dealt well with it. We work well with a town manager that does well. I talk to him at least once a day, or if I'm irritated, I talk to him twice. But I think the skill that I have the most is I'm approachable. Today in my walk, I counted the number of people. 19 people stopped and talked to me about very positive things that are going on in Clifton Forge. Sometimes I think if you're not approachable, people don't hear you. And communication to me is not the ability to talk. It's the ability to listen and understand what people are asking you. You know, we've heard, I've heard negative things in the past eight years, but I look at where it was when eight years ago when I got on town council, it's grown immensely. It's grown immensely. The problem is, is everybody thinks things can happen overnight. I don't think you can be on town council thinking <coughs> you're going to solve the problem tomorrow. I have the patience to solve problems, I understand problems, and I'm not afraid to talk to anybody or say anything. We are a fine community. I think we, we deserve and need fine leaders. I put myself in that category. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm one of the stronger candidates because when you think about it, what makes a great town, um, good schools, good hospitals, uh, safety and technology. I am in technology, at least one of those industries. Um, so I, I don't believe any, we don't have any schools in Clifton Forge. So um, I don't think we have a good urgent care in Clifton Forge neither. So I think I'm in at least one of those industries. I don't know the full background of my competition, but I think I'm a safe bet because I'm at least in one of those major industries, what makes a great town and what makes a town prosperous technology. So, and we desperately need that here. Uh, as I alluded to in my opening, I'm a lifelong resident of Clifton Forge. I think because of that, I have a good grasp of the evolving dynamics of Clifton Forge. Uh, my background and my educational background, uh, I was one of the top economic and business students throughout my cadetship at BMI. Uh, good enough to get into law school and I got my Juris Doctorate degree from the University of Tennessee. I think understanding both the economics and business of decisions that town council makes and the legal implications that face those decisions uh, helps me bring a different perspective to town council. Um, I don't know that that makes me any better than anybody up here. I feel pretty good about all the candidates up here, I will say that. Um, I've also, uh, throughout my adult life, been choosing for, chosen for leadership positions. That started back at VMI when I was chosen as a cadet captain as one of the top military guys in the Corps of Cadets. Um, that continued on into my adult life here, working here in, at Allegheny County, being chosen to supervisory positions with the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, I've even been, on the side, a head coach, been chosen to be the head coach and lead programs at Allegheny High School. Uh, good enough that I've even got inducted to the Hall of Fame uh, by the grace of God. So um, I have 15 years of public service experience. I understand how the departments interwork together. Um, and I think the most important thing is that I bring honesty and transparency to the job. And I'm responsive when people ask questions. Is that time? Oh. It, I'm, I'm responsive that if I don't know, and I don't know everything, if I don't know the answer, I'm a hard enough worker that I will go and try to find the answer and get back to people. Thank you. Like everyone else has said, every candidate up here is a very strong candidate for town council. Um, at this point, I feel that I'm a strong candidate because I spend all of my free time working for free for the town. I have been elected as the chair of Parks and Trails. I handle emails for Parks and Trails all day long for the All Abilities Park, for the Sensory Trail Project, general Parks and Trails comments and ideas that people have for me. Um, I do social media for the town. I've done surveys for different aspects for the town. Um, I have to run Parks and Trails meetings. I do, I do a lot of different things at this time. Just out of the goodness of my heart because I want this town to prosper. I've worked various different industries. I've worked everything from retail to food service, 
I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, so at one point I was a social worker. Um, I'm a member of SAG-AFTRA, where I was working in Los Angeles for about five years doing acting, improv, and sketch comedy mostly. Um, I, I can work with anybody. If people come up to me and say, you know, I don't know how you work with that person. I can work with anybody as long as it's going to accomplish something for the greater good. I always have the time to listen to other people. I always have the time to hear what it is that they need, what they want. And I try to get whatever I can get done to make sure that they'll be happy with the end result and not just say, oh, it's just another person who didn't listen to what I needed or just heard it and it went in one ear and out the other. I think that I'm a great listener and I think that I'm going to be a great town council person if I'm elected. Thank you all. On a car loan with a little get up and go, our credit union offers quick loan approvals and great rates. Our loans get you on the road fast because we belong to you. Jackson River Community Credit Union, we belong to you. Online at jacksonrivcomcu.org. We're federally insured by NCUA. We're an equal housing lender. We